Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation. So first I would like to apologize for uh, two things. So the first thing, it is not a talk about large deviations, but about small deviations. And the second thing, it is a talk that I gave uh, two months ago at, uh, in Paris, and uh, some people in this room were in Paris last, uh, last month. So this is a joint work with uh, Patricia Gonçalves from um, Lisbon, Milton Yara from Rio, and uh, Mariel Simon from uh, Lille. So in this talk, I am interested in one-dimensional asymmetric system, interacting particle system, which uh, display anomalous diffusions. So what means anomalous diffusion? Just means that if you take a system, a very extended system, uh, which conserves some quantity like energy or mass, and you put some extra energy or some extra mass somewhere, and you look at uh, the evolution of this uh, perturbation, it will not diffuse like a brown motion, like a standard heat equation, but like a super diffusive process. And the central question, the main question is, what is the super diffusive process that you observed, and how is it universal with respect to the microscopic dynamics of your system? So, so in my talks, uh, we will, I will define some interacting particle system which is one-dimensional and which conserves some quantities. So this quantity would mean my case would be called energy and volume, but you could think to energy, density, momentum, what you want. And uh, since you have some conserved quantities, and um, what is expected is that if you rescale space and time, these conserved quantities, the empirical conserved quantity, if you average in some, uh, some, uh, some box, sufficiently big box, and in time, this uh, conserved quantity will evolve with time according to some macroscopic equation, which in my case will be um, described by a system of conservation laws. Okay, so we can think to earlier equations. Typical situation is earlier equations, and these are the hydronic limits of the system. And uh, quite recently, there is a theory which was uh, developed by Spohn, which is called the nonlinear fluctuating hydrodynamic theory, which uh, claims that if you have some system, interacting particle system, whose macroscopic behavior is described by this kind of system of conservation laws, just looking at these uh, microscopic, microscopic conservation laws, you can deduce the form of the fluctuations of the conserved quantities. So you don't have to look at the microscopic model. You have just to look at the form of the macroscopic equation, and you can predict what are the fluctuations at equilibrium of uh, these uh, conserved quantities. So now I would like to specify the model I will study and I will try to study these uh, fluctuations. So the macroscopic models is the following. So you have a lattice field model, so on, on, sorry, on each side x of the lattice z, the infinite lattice, so we took the thermodynamic limit first, you have some occupation variable depending on time t, and which is some real variable, okay, indexed by the site x. So eta x of t is just a real variable, and the dynamics of, uh, of his, um, of his uh, variables is composed of two parts. A part which is a just deterministic part, and the second part which is a stochastic part. So this model was introduced with Gabriel Stoltz and myself in order to simplify some previous models that we introduced with Jadabazil uh, and Stefano, uh, which has some simplification of chains of oscillators in which you are generally three conserved quantities one-dimensional chains of oscillators. So you can think about this model like a simplification of chains of oscillators. Okay, and uh, why do we introduce some stochastic part? The stochastic part is just introduced because otherwise we are not able mathematically to, um, to, to understand the, the chaoticity which is produced by the deterministic dynamics. So we put at end the chaoticity directly in the microscopic system by adding some knobs. So what is the model? So it is composed of two parts, the deterministic part and the stochastic part. So the deterministic part, okay, written like that, maybe you don't see that it is some Hamilton, um, Hamiltonian system, but it is Hamiltonian system, in fact, perform a change of variables. And so this is just a set of coupled ODEs, coupled by some potential V, 
Okay, so, and it is local. It is just near, nearest neighbor interactions. So this is uh, the, um, the microscopic uh, deterministic part, and you can see directly from these uh, equations that you have two conserved quantities. The first one is the sum of eta x, which is the volume, and the second one is the energy, V of eta x. Okay, this is, these are two conserved quantities, and now I will introduce some noise. Stochastic perturbation, which will conserve these two conserved, these two conserved quantities conserved by the deterministic part. So what is uh, the stochastic part? It is very simple. So on each side, on each bound, x, x plus 1, okay, here you have some bound, x, x plus 1, you put some Poisson process. Okay, you can imagine that it is just a clock, and so between the blue points, you have just exponential times. And what you do is that, uh, so you have some infinite number of clocks, here it is a time, okay, and, and uh, when uh, between two su successive rings of the clocks, what you do is that you just let evolve the dynamics according to this uh, deterministic part. When the clock rings, for example, this one, what you do is that you exchange the variable eta x here with the variable eta x plus one here. Okay, and then you start with the dynamics according to the deterministic part until the next uh, blue point, and then at this time, what you do is you exchange the two nearest neighbor uh, variables which correspond to this clock, okay? And you see if this stochastic part is, um, is a process which conserves the two uh, quantities that I defined before. Of course, it conserves a lot of other quantities. Because it conserves every quantity which can be written like sum of f of eta x for some function f. But the fact is that Due to the interaction between this stochastic part and this deterministic part, what you can prove is that there are only two conserved quantities, which are this energy and this volume. So this is, mathematically, you can really prove that the energy and the volume, when you consider the mixture of this deterministic part and stochastic part, are conserved, are the only conserved quantities of the stochastic model. So this is a well-behaved well model for uh, statistical physics. Okay, so you resolve the problem of ergodicity in some sense. And of course, um, since you have uh, two conserved quantities, you can check that uh, these uh, Gibbs measure, which are parameterized by two uh, parameters, one which is beta, which can be interpreted like the inverse of the temperature, tau, like a pressure. These uh, Gibbs measure, which are in fact product measures, are invariant for the dynamics. Of course, they are invariant for the deterministic dynamics, but they are also invariant for the stochastic dynamics. When you exchange eta x with eta x plus one, you don't modify this quantity, so it is invariant. Okay, so you have a system with some invariant measures which are very simple. And uh, okay, also in this case, because you have this noise, you can mathematically prove in the regime, in the smooth regime, that you have the atomic equation of the system which are given by a system of conservation laws. So here V is the, it is the volume, I mean the, the, the profile of the volume in some microscopic uh, time scale, and E is the profile of the energy. So these are, these are the microscopic equation of my system, and there are um, scalar conservation laws which depend on some flux P Okay, and P square, so P is the flux for the volume, P square is the flux for the energy, and this, can, this flux, of course, can be computed directly from the microscopic system if you know the, what is uh, the, the potential between the particles. Okay, but it is. And there is a special case, which is when, um, when the potential is quadratic, when the potential is quadratic, so the, the, the flux of the volume is very simple, it's just itself, so you have just a transport equation in this case, and for the energy, it is just depending on the first equation. And in this case, you don't have shocks, you don't have dispersion anywhere. Okay. Uh, so in fact, this is a real challenging problem to extend this result after the first shock. So it is only in the source regime that we can prove really these equations and uh, by the method introduced in this paper by Stefano Varad and Yao. 
And so now, so we are in the in the in, in the framework of the nonlinear fluctuating aerodynamic theory. So we have some equation, macroscopic equation given by system of conservation law describing your system. So you can a priori you could apply the uh, nonlinear fluctuating atomic theory. So the nonlinear fluctuating atomic theory of spawn is a ball a priori to give you um, the evolution of the. So you are at equilibrium. So you, you you start with your infinite system at equilibrium with the Gibbs measure by fixing some inverse of temperature and pressure, and you look at the space-time correlation of the conserved quantities, so of the energy and the volume. Okay, and you want to understand what is the behavior of these uh, quantities for large time, large x. Okay? And uh, so, according to the theory of spawn, if you have these uh, earlier equations that I presented before, you can deduce the behavior of these equations, these, um, these correlation functions. Okay, and uh, so what I, what I explained before is what is very important is to notice that, in fact, this theory is a priori valid for only by looking at the macroscopic equation, not on the details of the microscopic dynamics. So, uh, what are the predictions? So, there is a case which is well known since a long time, which is a case where you have only one conserved quantity. Okay, here in my case, we have two conserved quantities, but in the case where we have a system with short range interactions, which is conservative in some quantity, so there is only two universality classes. The first one is the Edward Wilkinson class, and the second one is what is called the KPZ fixed point class. Okay, and you have only these two classes, two universality classes. Now, in the case where you have more than one conserved quantities, you have many other uh, universality class, a priori. And here, for example, in this uh, picture, which is taken from this paper of uh, Popkoff and Schutz, okay, you don't have, there are some, const some coupling constants that you can compute by, from the, your LR equations. And you see, you have all these squares, which represent some universality class with some uh, different uh, scaling parameters. And in my talk, I will be interested in these two universality classes. Okay, and in, in the case where, for example, n is equal to 3, you have some other uh, picture, other universality class. So now I will consider only the harmonic case in which uh, the potential is just a quadratic potential. So, okay, it is like some harmonic chain, if you want, harmonic chains of oscillators plus noise. And in this case, of course, the energy is just the square of the x. And uh, so the results that we obtain are in partial agreement with spawn prediction, but not in total agreement. So two months ago, when I gave this talk in Paris, I said that it was in perfect agreement with spawn's um, prediction. But then I went last week, I discussed with Vabishek, and he told me that when you check carefully uh, the prediction of spawn, and you apply to this model, you don't get exactly the result that, will that I will present. You get something else. So you have to modify the, uh, the spawn theory in order to get exactly the correct result. So it means that, okay, for me, this, uh, this theory is very nice, but probably it needs, to, it needs some adjustment in order to, to, be, to be correct. Okay, so what are the first results I would like to, to present is the following. So we are interested in these uh, quantities, in the, these correlation function of the conserved quantities. So I would like to study the large time behavior of this energy correlation at equilibrium. So one over beta, the inverse of the, the, the temperature, is the average of the energy. And here tau is the inverse of, um, is the average of the volume. So I look at the correlation for large time and large x of these, um, these two quantities I would like to describe. And the first result that we obtained uh, two years ago is the following. So if you have, uh, for the volume, in fact, you have something which is very, uh, nothing is surprising. So the volume evolves according, if you rescale time by n squared, so diffusive time scale, and you rescale space, so n is a scaling parameter, then you, you, you can show that this correlation function of the volume converges to the heat equation. 
Okay, so you have normal diffusion for this uh, quantity. On the other hand, if you look at the energy, it is very different. The, the time scaling is, is sub-diffusive, so which means that you have um, to wait for a short time in order to see some evolution of the profile of the, of the fluctuations, and these fluctuations are described by some fractional heat equation. More exactly, it is described by some skew fractional heat equation. So the skewness is provided by this term here, and if you are not familiar with this uh, kind of um, of, uh, of process, it is just the generator of some Levy process, but which is asymmetric. So the, if you write it in terms of Fourier symbol, it is just psi for 3 over 4 um, plus i psi psi for 1 over 4. So this is the Fourier symbol of uh, this process. So the reason, so you see, it is, uh, so you have a system and you have two different time scales in the same system. One is diffusive, one is subdiffusive. And one, one of the conserved quantities evolve in a normal way, like a Brownian motion, but the second one is evolved according to some Levy process. So you have some long range, um, it is described by some non-local operator, which is here, despite the fact that you start with something which is with local interaction. No, 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 it is not a shift. It is just that uh, the, the distribution is not symmetric. But you so don't have... What is the, uh, but the fact that it is not... If you, have a, if you add only phase one, fit parameter, your Levy process will, will have some uh, symmetry. So this is, in fact, uh, here you have a sound mode and a heat mode. The heat mode is correspond to the energy at velocity zero, and the sound mode at some velocity. And this, this uh, skewness is produced by this, uh, this, this sound mode, in fact. Okay, but it is not like a shift. It's just the fact that it's asymmetric. And in fact, if you want, to, if, if this is the correct, uh, I mean, this is a fundamental object, because there is some paper uh, by Stefano, where they have, they consider a similar system in which you have some harmonic chain, but now with three conserved quantities. So you have the stretch, you have the momentum, and you have the energy. In this case, you have two sound modes, which one has some velocity in this direction, and the other one has the same velocity in the opposite direction. And in the case for the energy, what they get is only the uh, symmetric fraction of Laplace. So they don't, they don't see this skewness. So this QNS in fact produced by the other modes, but since they are opposite velocities, they cancel. So you don't see it in the energy. Uh, okay, because uh, okay, it is not formulated in a, in a very um, rigorous way. So, the, so, but if you have to introduce some scaling parameter because they say that uh, this, this, uh, this correlation behaves like T or some alpha and so on. So you have to re rephrase this, uh, this, uh, this exponent in terms of scaling. But it could be a different time scale for the two conserved quantities. Yeah, yes, it is. So it is what you observe. It is exactly what you have. And in all the models, it is what you expect. You have some different time scales. Okay. So. Uh, uh, okay, so I don't. Uh, okay, I don't want to present the proof of theorem. Just I would like just to say that uh, there are one reason for which we can prove that, and that we cannot prove it for an for an harmonic system. The first reason is that this, uh, the reason the main reason is that if you look at the endpoint correlation functions of the conserved quantities, they are closed in this system. The evolution are closed, so you don't have to deal with some hierarchy. You have just to look at the four point correlation functions, and it is only these four point correlation functions that you have to study. And just to give some idea of the proof, so I think it, maybe it is interesting to understand why, how you can produce some non local operator, so the fractional Laplacian, starting from a system which has only local interactions. And there is a famous paper by uh, some um, Caffarelli and Sylvest in which they gave some interpretation of the fractional Laplace. And this interpretation is exactly what 
appears when we perform the computation in a model. So how do you get some fractional Laplacian uh, as starting with some local interaction, some local operator? So the idea is the following. So imagine that you want to compute the, you have a function f of one variable, you want to compute the fractional Laplacian. What you say is that it will be given by the, the essentially some derivative of some function of two variables with some parameter s, which is 1 minus a divided by 2. And this function u, what it is, is a solution of some Poisson equation in two dimensions. So you start with a function f on the horizontal line, you add some extra um, dimension, and then if you, try, you solve this equation here, this Poisson equation of two variables, which is quite degenerate in one direction, what you see is that this fractional Laplacian is given by this function. So it explains, this explains how we can produce a non-local operator starting from some local operator, some local interaction. Okay, yes, it's true. <laughs> so the skew fractional, you have the same picture. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I said that if you want to extend this result for an harmonic system, it is very difficult. And in fact, we were able to do it only, we have a very modest result in this direction. So which is when you introduce some anharmonicity, which is very small. So if, uh, so we know that if this anharmonicity is not here, so if gamma n is zero, we come back to the previous feature. In this case, we know that the A energy is described by some three over two stable asymmetric Levis process, and the volume fluctuation field is described by a Brown motion. Okay, diffusive, super diffuse. Now, if you, if you believe in the nonlinear fluctuating adroit mix, what you expect is that if you perform the computation, maybe I did the I hope I did the computation correctly. So if tau is equal to zero, so if the pressure is zero, for any temperature you expect that even if you add some harmonicity of other one, you will get exactly the same result. The same scenario should be correct. Okay, you should get the same uh, process. And what we are able to do is that to show that if the other harmonicity is very small, okay, you see if it's exponent, then this is correct. Okay, this is a very modest result in this sense, but it is the only result in the nonlinear case that I know. Okay, and then. So, but now I would like to discuss more on uh, the main, um, um, the main topic of this talk, which is uh, the following. I would like to understand how, so we have some systems, so here we are in this universality class, okay, 3 over 2 and 2, so 3 over 2 is for the fact that um, we have some, um, this 3 over 2 which is here, this exponent for the energy, and this 2 is the fact that you have some uh, brown motion for the volume. So we are in this universality class, and a priori you can say, okay, if I modify the temperature, the pressure, I modify some parameters in my potential, maybe I can go from one university class to some other university class. And I would like to understand in very simple uh, context how what happens when you try to, when you want to go from one university class to some other university class. And of course, since for the moment the only university class which is understood is this one, which is provided by this model or the model of Stefano, and this one, which is a case where everything is diffusive, so we, I will concentrate on these um, two boxes. So I want to get a system, modify my system in order to cross these two university classes. So how do I do, I, how I do it? So, so I will present two, um, two ways to do it. So the first way is uh, by considering what I call the weekly harmonic chain. So what is a weekly harmonic chain? So you remember that in the dynamics you have uh, two parts. You have a deterministic part, which is given just by essentially some chains of harmonic oscillators, plus some stochastic part, which consists to exchange with rate one, uh, eta x with eta x plus one. Now, what I do is that I will introduce in front of my potential, in front of my quadratic potential, some parameter which can be small or large. Okay, it is small or large depending on the value of b. If b goes to infinity, 
Okay, it means that if the V is essentially zero. If B is equal to zero, it means that it is a further one. So if B is equal to zero, what we expect is that we are in a, um, which is um, here, if B is equal to zero. Now, if B equal to infinity, what happens is that you don't have the deterministic part. So you have only the exchange noise. You have only the fact that at some random times, you exchange eta x with eta x plus one. So essentially, you have some Laplacian. Okay, and if you have some Laplacian, what you get is phase universality class. So a priori, you can expect that by letting B go from zero to infinity, you should cross these two universality class. If you are uh, used with exclusion process, it is exactly the same when you think to the symmetric exclusion process, asymmetric exclusion process, and weakly asymmetric exclusion process. And you know that in the symmetric exclusion process, you have the Edward Wilkinson class, uh, asymmetric exclusion process, you have the KPZ fixed point class, and then, if you want to cross the two universality class, what you do is that you consider the weakly asymmetric exclusion process, and when the scaling is one over square root of n, then you get the KPZ equation, which is a link between the two universality class. So this is exactly the same spirit, but in a very simple way, in very simple um, case, because here we have two Gaussian universality classes. Okay, so the question is, for example, what is the critical value of B for which you cross the two universality classes? And so this is the result that we obtained. So you see what, so maybe I forgot something, okay. So what, what do we do? So here we have some parameter B, okay, and here there is some parameter C which is important for the following. And we look at the system in a diffusive time, in, a, in some time scale, that for the moment we don't know, in order to see some evolution of the energy field. Okay, before in the case where B is equal to zero, you have to look in the time scale T n three half. If B is equal to infinity, it is diffusive, you have to look in the time scale T n square. Now, depending on B, you have to look at the system in the different time scale. And what is the time scale? So here it is a time scale, which is provided by the exponent A, depending on the intensity of uh, your um, potential. And what happens is that, okay, if you start with a very large B, when B is equal to infinity, you have just the noise, so you have just a diffusive system. So in this case, the time scale is two, and the energy is described by the heat equation. Now, when B is equal to zero, it is a, so it means that you have some intensity one in front of the potential, then the time scale is three half, and you get the fractional heat equation. And it turns out that this regime of the fractional heat equation is correct, remains valid up to the value one third for the intensity of the, in front of the potential. But when you cross the value one third, then you jump to the diffusive, diffusive uh, scenario. Okay, and this time, time scale here, just a linear time scale, depends on the value of P. So what is interesting is probably this blue point, which represents the process should interpolate between the two in a And this uh, blue point, in fact, is described by a Levy process, which interpolate the heat equation, Brunner motion, and the fractional heat equation, so the asymmetric Levy stable process. What is the form of this process? It is the following. So it has a quite simple form. It is just a Laplacian minus um, C power three half, okay, times the skew fraction of Laplacian. So you see it is some interpolating process. Okay, in this context, this is the equivalent of the KPZ equation, but of course it is very simple with respect to the KPZ equation. As C goes to infinity, you see this essentially you have to rescale because you are not in the same time scale. This converts to the skew fraction of Laplace. As C goes to zero, it goes to the Laplace. So this is exactly a process which interpolates between the two universality classes in this sense. And uh, uh, so now I would like to present a second way to cross the universality classes by using a different uh, approach. Here we're starting with the same system, but we modify the intensity of the potential. 
Now what we'll do, what we will do is that we will um, provide some other mechanism in order to uh, cross these um, two classes. So you consider the initial process, so the harmonic chain plus the exchange noise that I defined before, but now we add a second stochastic perturbation. So we modify uh, the system in the following way. So we add some second noise, stochastic noise, which consists to flip eta x into minus eta x at some random times. And the intensity of this noise is described by this uh, parameter which depends on the scaling parameter, okay, like in the previous situation. But here, uh, the perturbation is given by the flip noise. Okay, so what does it, what does this uh, noise, this flip noise, you see, when you exchange eta x with uh, minus eta x, the energy, which is in my case eta x squared, is not, uh, is not destroyed. But on the other hand, when you change eta x into minus eta x, the second conserved quantity is destroyed. So minus eta, it, okay, this is not conserved by the, by the flip noise. And uh, what you can uh, show is that if um, this uh, parameter b is equal to zero, so if the flip noise is of intensity one, then you have that the energy is diffusing. It is not super diffusive. It becomes diffuse. On the other hand, if b is equal to infinity, you get, um, so it means that the flip noise is not here, and you get uh, something which is super diffusive with a skew fraction Laplace. So now we can ask, what is the value of b for which you get some crossing between these two inverse And the answer is, uh, okay, so it is what I say. So as before, we have to look at the time scale in order to see some evolution. And we get the picture, which is uh, different from the previous one, which is that, okay, if B is equal to zero, it means that you have the flip. If you have the flip, you are diffusive. So the time scale is two. If B goes to infinity, it is super diffusive. And you get three over two, because you don't have any flip. Okay, and then there is a crossover for some spatial value of uh, B, which is, in this case, is one. And at this point, you have some, um, when you are here for this critical value of the intensity of the flip noise, you have some uh, Levy process, which is not the same as before. The Levy process has now a symbol, Fourier symbol, which is provided by this uh, value. So the, the C that you see here, I recall you, is the C that you put in front of uh, the flip noise. Okay, and as before, if you send C to zero, it goes to the free symbol of the skew three over four fraction Laplace. Okay, so it goes, when C goes to zero, so it means that the flip noise becomes, uh, becomes absent. It uh, goes to, uh, to, to the skew fraction equation, while as C goes to infinity, when it is scaled with T, it goes to the free symbol of uh, the Laplace. So you have to rescale by C because you are not in the same time scale. Okay, so you see, this is a different process to cross the two universality classes. And so the final picture is the following, to summarize a little bit what I did, is that we provide some model which belong to this universality class described by a skew fraction of Laplace with his exponent three over two, and for the volume two, and we proposed uh, some ways to um, cross this universality class in which everything is uh, diffusive by two different processes. And we, we obtain some processes connecting this universality class. But you see there are different possibilities to, to cross this universality class. And of course, you could ask the same question for the other universality classes which exist. For example, in the case where the two um, the two fields are evolved like according to some KPZ, KPZ, KPZ. What are the ways that we can cross to cross this, um, this university class? So maybe some couple KPZ questions. Maybe you have some other, um, so other ways to do it. I don't know. 
But for the moment, the only classes which are really understand is field one and field one. The other ones, we don't have any, any model for which we can prove something. In the case of, we have several concept concepts. Okay, so I will stop here. Thank you. Are there questions? Let me check. Even when the coupling is that critical one over n to the power one third, even then the sound mode is always yes. It's always diffusive. In any case, it is always diffusive. Model, I guess, if if you have a, a nonlinear potential uh, and finite pressure, then you expect uh, KPZ and K KPZ KPZ, is it? Or I mean, that's no, not uh, necessarily. It depends. There are some, it depends on the form of the potential. So, for example, you could get this uh, universality class here. I think that even in the case, for example, in the case of aquatic potential. The perfect potential. Yeah, if uh, the pressure is non-zero, maybe you don't. Uh, I don't know. You you have to do the computation with uh, non-linear fluctuating gas theory. But you cannot reach uh, with this model. You cannot reach all these universality class that you could expect. But uh, there is not only this one. KPZ, KPZ is not the only possibility. Uh, are there other questions, Francis? Can you get uh, more information from the uh, crossover uh, study? For instance, uh, what Stefano was referring to, the emergence of the... Uh, uh, you mean in the model of Stefano, if I can do the same? No, no, no. Uh, in this model, uh, when you get your result uh, for the crossover regime, the first one, the, fir the simplest one that you, you studied uh, uh, what between the the regime here you have two crossover um, you have two crossovers uh, possibilities yeah so i'm talking of the first uh, possibility the crossover between the diffusive case and uh, the case of uh, of your model but it is exactly that i have some crossover between the diffusive case and yeah. the super diffusive so ca ca can you get uh, yeah but uh, but I, I get some description of the process which uh, cross the two uh, the two guys. So I mean, it is uh, here. You see, you have you have some Levy process which describes the, the evolution of the fluctuation field of energy for this critical value. I don't. I feel if you want something more precise. So it's just a mixture between the Laplacian evolution and the, uh, I'm talking of the energy evolution. Of uh, the, okay, uh, if this is the case, in phase, uh, if you consider the phys one, which is uh, what I call the weakly harmonic chain. Yeah, exactly. This is what I mean. But uh, in the other case, it is not the same. You see the Fourier symbol? Okay. Yeah, phys one. So this is not just k square plus c times uh, phys guy. Is uh, something different. I don't, I don't know what it is. It is a Levy process. But, uh, okay. So you have two different ways to, to reach uh, to cross. For example, in the case of one conserved quantities, I know there is a KPZ equation, but I, I don't know if there is some possibility to do it in a different way. Okay, I have another question. Uh, so uh, coming back to your. Uh, first type of result when you look at the super diffusive case only. Uh, so imagine that instead of uh, making this uh, Poisson, okay, stochastic part, which is uh, an exchange of eta x variable between neighbors, you do it to, with long range jump. So you, you kind of replace the Laplacian by some other long range Operator. Uh, yes, but in this so case, uh, this fractional Laplacian would be produced by, by the noise. So it is a simpler situation. But here, it, for example, if you, if you take the exclusion process with long range, with long jumps, you get the fractional Laplacian. But, uh, so 
So this is uh, more difficult because you start with something which is purely local and you get some non-local operators. And for physically, I don't know if it makes sense to consider a noise which is non-local in space. Okay, thank you. Are there more questions? Okay, so if not, let's thank again Cédric and the speakers this morning.